Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen Kumi Trent. Today we're having fun. We're going to be splattering paint and creating this fun, you know, spring forest scene, uh, kind of abstract. Seriously guys, it's super easy for any beginner. Um, you're going to need a couple of different tools besides watercolor. You're going to need some masking fluid, um, but that's about it. You know, masking fluid and just something to pick it up with. I go over this step by step and it's just something fun to, you know, an exercise to, to you know, have you guys enjoying watercolor and thinking outside the box. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. Also, don't forget to check out my Patreon. I have exclusive tutorials there weekly with traceables and ad-free videos. You can see that little little link right there, um, you know, and then go to that and check it out. If you have any questions, again, leave them in the comment section and let's get started with some splattering paint. All right, to get started, we'll go over supplies. I have a piece of Arches 100% cotton cold pressed paper. Uh, this is six by nine and I taped it with scotch tape on just a old piece of cardboard from one of my um, pads of paper that I have. That's a nice thick one actually. Um, my palette with my paints in it. I go over, go over all my paints as I use them. I always have them in the description box. I paper towel, my water jugs are close by. Um, so this is a really fun exercise and, you know, just to get you, you know, what's the word? Uh, just kind of thinking outside the box slash giving some ideas slash, you know, taking you out of that. If you're in a rut of like what's a pain and you just want to just want to play. We're basically playing. It's Saturday. I remember, I remember as a kid that we would do like watch cartoons. Saturday is supposed to be a fun day, right? don't have to be so serious on Saturday and um, we're not going to be serious on Saturday. So this is based off of that um, splatter painting I did a long time ago that everyone loved that was fun and easy to do. So we're going to do something similar. Um, although this time I'm going to use some of this masking fluid. You can get this at um, on Amazon for like $4. I have a link in my description box. It's PBO and it's really liquidy as you can hear it. And uh, I just going to take a brush and you could splatter this. Also, I'm going to take a little crappy old brush. You want to use a crappy brush. Nothing like really fancy schmancy for this one. You can hear me trying to get my paintbrushes. <laughs> Some scrap. Look at, see, this is all worn out. Nasty little brush. Nasty little brushes are good to have. So I'm just going to take this brush. Um, grab another brush or you could grab whatever you want. You don't even have to grab a brush. You can take the masking fluid and you're going to tap it and splatter that. See, it's going to leave little splatters because it's a smaller brush. If you had a bigger brush, there you go. Splatter the little masking fluid. And we're going to also paint some of it too. So we're splattering it. So it's going to be like white. We're going to also paint it. So I'll take this brush and some of the bigger spots you can kind of like just push down a little bit because it'll take a while to um, <laughs> to dry if they're like that. Just kind of push them around. See? Randomly pushing them around. Do, do, do. This is going to leave like nice white little areas for the splatter painting for the, you know, the flowers to go in. So if you wanted to paint much lighter flowers, it would be much easier this way. I'll grab some more of this masking fluid. What I like to do splatter and then touch it next after this is that you, the splatter has an organic way of just flowing. And so sometimes it's hard when you're painting, you know, the uh, masking fluid to have the organic feel of the flow of like a splatter. So it's best to splatter it and then you can go back and just touch where it was splattered because then you have touched the organic nature of where it fell. Does that make any sense to you guys? I hope so. So, I mean, because what's what's going to happen when you paint it yourself? You have a tendency just to make like this perfect little sections, and then you don't have that look of an organic flow of splatter and paint. So when you splatter it, you can just go back over and touch those areas that splattered, pushing down, so it looks organic because you're just touching the areas that were splattered. And that's all I can say about that. 
<laughs> so once you do that, you know, you feel satisfied. You can get a little bigger ones kind of in the front that didn't happen to be splattered. Just like that. And a few over here. All right, so we're going to let that dry. And then we're going to come back and we're still going to start playing with paint. That's what we're doing today. We're going to play with paint. So like I said, you splatter it, then you kind of kind of push down and mush around where it was splattered. There's a few up here that are white and splattered and that's fine. Um, because it just gives you the organic placement of where you want the, where you want the um, masking fluid to go. If you just kind of dabbled in the masking fluid, you're going to get this you know, meh, 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 meh. It's, you, people have a tendency to make things kind of like, uh, what is it, carpamentalized, carp, carp, I can't speak today, you know, and the not organic. So let's just do that and we're gonna dry. Okay. Okay, so now that I let that dry, we can start to flush in all our fun colors. So you could have a sky here, but this is kind of like in the woodsy kind of, I didn't want to do a sky type of situation. It's like if you're walking through the woods and it had some beautiful, you know, spring flowers popping up everywhere, kind of the, that's what I was going for. It's kind of an abstract kind of feel. I mean, I already have a splatter one that's where like a meadow with a blue sky. So we're gonna try and do something a little different. So you're gonna work with some big brushes. Um, I have a bunch of big floppy brushes. Whatever, whatever works for you. I have this Princeton 12 brush. I actually have a bigger one than that. I have a six. This is a big floppy brush. This one's, I think this one's a little too big. I don't really need this one. So I'm gonna grab my brush and I have my olive green paint here, watercolor. And I actually use some olive green gouache from Holbein. Both, all my paints are from Holbein. I love Holbein paints. I kind of mix the two. I love gouache. Um, it has a versatility of being loose and wet like watercolor and then opaque like acrylic paint. The difference between acrylic paint and gouache is that it's matte. It doesn't have that shiny look. And a gouache you can like activate like watercolor unless you get acrylic gouache which is like almost like acrylic paint. So you know. So we're just going to dab in some of this nice pretty green. I'm actually going to loosen up my, take off the water, I mean excuse me, the paint off my brush and grab some of this yellow, cabin yellow deep. And just get that ready on the side. And I'll explain to you why. And then same thing with like some of the blues I have here. I have a bunch of different blues. I have a peacock blue, I have an indigo and a Prussian blue. I'll combine all three, you know, play around with the blues. So I like to have a lot of paint loose by when I'm doing stuff like this. It's like I like to dab in the paints as I'm painting it. So we're going to just do wet on dry. I'm going to grab some of this green color. I'm going to kind of wash it in. See? Loose. And basically we're going to work from like three quarters of the way up. I'm just going to tap it in here. I call it tapping in, but there might be a better technical way for it. This is what I do. I just kind of, I say flushing in. Some people may say something else. But I'm just pushing in, pushing in. Or, blowing in the paint, filling it in. You know, flushing, flooding, flooding in the paint. See, I'm just kind of taking this brush and just tapping it, all that color in there, the green. Can kind of go down here a little bit. We don't want it to be perfect. Like it's straight line across. We don't ever want that kind of straight line situation. And then I'm going to go grab some Van Dyke Brown. I'm activating it. It was not like, I didn't take it right from the tube, so I'm have to put some more water on there. I just kind of move that around too. Just kind of moving the paint around. Might grab some indigo peacock blue. Kind of put that in there up here, a little darker. Just going to be playing around with paint here. This mostly greens. I grab some more concentrated paint, which means it's less water. Just going to dab all this fun stuff in here and see where it takes me. 
<laughs> That's what I want you guys to do. I want you guys to play, play. We, you know, like the commercial with the pigs in the window and he's like out the head out the window. We, <laughs> I always like that commercial. See, I'm adding more Van Dyke Brown. And you can kind of play around with like take, lifting up your paper and kind of moving the paint around this way, you know, see where it flows. I'm adding some water so it flows down a little bit. While it pedals down here, you can just kind of lift it up with your brush. And then I can flow it back down this way too. I kind of want that blue in the middle. Kind of grab some of that brown. Could be like the back end of the woods, <clears throat> excuse me, where it's dark. So I'll add some brown, maybe a little bit of gray. Even though we want to keep this really like light and fun and playful, I do want to add some darker tones. It could be with some blues and some grays in some areas. See, now that it's really wet, it's starting to bleed down nicely. You can kind of remove it if you didn't like it. And go back in with some more green. Get a little darker on this side. So you get this nice, fun, flowing green. And now on the bottom here, it's kind of cauliflower edging, which is, you know, it's getting, because we didn't have any water here. So you can just grab some of your, your, your brush, clean off the brush with just water and just kind of push the paint like this. And soften that edge. Just like that, right? At this point, I might grab some of my yellow, go right next to that. We're gonna be having fun in a second with all our lovely colors. I do wanna grab some green though before I splatter some other colors in. Kind of put some green kind of in here. Grab more of my green and in here. Just really loose. And I'll clean up my brush again. And I might get some darker green. So I might mix some like blue with my green. Some darker greens in there. A little Van Dyke Brown. I'm trying to get a variety of dark greens and light greens. You can go back in with that yellow. Just remember, it's kind of like in the woods. I'm going to be playing around with greens color. Okay. So once you get that, you can kind of clean up your brush a little bit again and kind of soften the edge just by hitting the edge of it. Just like that. So now we're gonna do something similar again. We can do a couple of things. We can take the same brush or a skinnier brush like this Princeton 8 long round and we can take some dark greens. I'm mixing like my olive green. I've got my Van Dyke brown and some indigo blue, some nice dark greens or light greens and medium greens. And we'll just make some swipe ups like this, but they're gonna kind of get washed out a little bit. Just do a little couple of swipe ups. Not, well, there's more than a couple, but some swipe ups. There's no technical name for it. <laughs> so wisp it, wisp up some like greens. You can do some in here. We're having fun, guys. See, wisp away. I don't sing well, so. Just like that, just have a variety of going crazy. It's kind of like grasses, but it's going to be abstract. So just bear with me with this craziness. I'm going to put them all sporadic throughout, grab different colors. Darker. See, I'm adding a little more brown on this one. I got a little more blue. There's a rhyme and reason to my craziness. Well, I hope you're having fun doing this, it's not stressing you out. This is the whole point, right? We want to have fun. Okay, let's get crazy with some color. You can do some purples, you can do some reds, 
pinks and oranges. I want you to go to town. I've got this bright rose here. Love it. This is what it looks like. Holbein 370 bright rose. Oh yeah, look at that. I had some color on my brush already, but it's not a big problem. Magenta's over here. You can kind of play with him. <laughs> Clean off your brush. I've got a brilliant orange here. Really bright. I mean, it's intense orange. It's fantastic. And I've got this um, yellow, of course. And then if we want to make a purple, I'm just going to clean up this little mess down here. And I'll grab some magenta, mixing with the peacock. It's the peacock in the library, if you guys know what that means. Some of you will know what that means. <laughs> with the candlestick. See, my paper towel is getting really soaked. I kind of fold it. All right, splatter time. So I get a, you really want a bigger brush, like a floppy brush like this one. Because um, then when you splatter, it has bigger splatters. So I'm going to get this really loose paint. Let's see how great that looks. Oh, yeah. Too much fun. That bright pink. Look at that. We are having fun, guys. Bright pink. Look at that. She is pretty. The big brush makes us nice big splatters. I might want to put some purple on the back. I gotta mix up way more paint. That's another thing when you're splattering, you gotta mix up a lot of paint. All right, purple. You try, it's try, it's hard to get it like in a specific spot, but you can try. Wait, we help, let me see, grab a piece of paper. This is from my <laughs> violet tutorial. Um, if you kind of like cover the area. That's that violet. I want a little bit more pink. We're just splattering here, see? Ah. Now, the same premise that we did with the uh, masking fluid, see where it's splattered, you can kind of just push the paint where it's splattered. Just pushing down on it. See? Push down on it. Look at that. Push down on it. Push down on it. Uh, and then you've got this organic looking flower. Because again, where the splatter goes, nobody knows now. Uh, it has a more organic feel to it. Right? And you clean up your brush and do the same thing with the pink ones. Push down on it. I've got purple on there, so it's kind of mixing now. That's how you kind of blend it, bleed it, where it's very loose. But it kind of gives you the, you know, the guide to where to go to paint. So it's a combination of splattering and pushing down the paint, right? We're going to keep doing this because we can. You might want to splatter some of the screen too. Because it's fun. Lots of fun. <laughs> and then the yellow. Yellow's going to be great. Especially on the green. I mean, you can't get more fun than this. Sorry, people. You don't have to put all these colors in if you want to keep it in, like, just maybe just purples and blues. I want to be crazy. Now with the yellow, I'm going to go in here and push in the yellow and it can go on the green, pushing down on that color. It's going to change this whole landscape right now, right? It might get a little muddy in some areas. You want to just dab up, dab it and then dab on the paper towel to get rid of some of that muddy color. You can just take the yellow, concentrate right from the tube and go out here too. Right, this is just a fun 
I'm dabbing, I'm just dabbing the yellow, yellow itself, just like this. See? Just like that. We're going to keep splattering away. I'm going to grab, maybe make a red. So, I looked up some of this color, and I've got my magenta, and I'll add some yellow. Make it a nice red. Let's get some more color in there. I like the different tones. Red poppy. And I actually want to go back in and grab some more of that rose. Woo! Went way out there. It got really wild child, huh? Crazy. I'm gonna grab our greens again. Maybe a little darker. Put some blue in there. Brown. Splatter up here in the woods area. Huh? It's getting a little wild up there. Like again, if you if it's getting too big and you want smaller, you might want to grab a smaller brush. And you're gonna get little teeny ones. Little teeny splatters. The closer you splatter, like the hold, the closer you hold this brush down to the paper, it will get more concentrated in that one section. You can see them getting really tight splatters right in this one section, and they're small, and that's kind of what I was going for. Really tiny ones. The bigger the brush, the bigger the splatter. You know, like the toothbrush makes those really tiny ones. Grab some of this blue. Make it dark green. Really close in here. Just grab some blue itself. And you kind of move it across. Right? Are we having fun yet? <laughs> and that's what we're just gonna do. We're gonna splatter, splatter some more dark green down in here. So your desk is going to be a mess if unless you don't, you know, you're going to want to put something bad underneath it, not bad, I mean, um, something that you don't care what happens to it. A piece of paper or, or a garbage bag or something so you don't wreck your desk because that paint will go everywhere. So yeah, I've got kind of a splatter mess. I'm going to lift up some of this paint Right, and at this point, I'm going to go back in and grab some of my rose and just kind of loosely paint in some of the color. See, I'm just really going to dab it. Now, we don't forget we have that um, masking fluid in places, so it's going to be a fun reveal when we go to do that. Just going in here and adding in some bright rose. If it gets too much, you can lift some of the paint up. Grab some of your paper towel. Just lift some of the paint. I feel like, ugh. It's getting too too crazy, right? I like the crazy. Lift some of that up. And that's another technique. You can kind of just push the paint around in here with your little paper towel. See, and you just move that red into the green and it had like a nice little technique there. I might take some nice yellow itself, mix it with some green here, and just go in in here and kind of, whoops, that's a little wet still. So you can take up some really wet paint with paper towel. I'm just gonna go and put some little yellow in here. See? Just kind of tapping it in. Tap, tap, tap. Kind of out here, too. It's a lot of red here, so I want to kind of lift that up. Go in here and tap that in. Just 
I can hit this green area too. We can add some more yellow. Okay. We're having fun. <laughs> Tapping it and removing it at the same time. You can kind of go in between the areas. <clears throat> but you want to keep some white parts. So at this point, I'm going to let it dry and we're going to work on putting some trees in. So once most of it's dry, you can go back over here with this white spaces that you did. Grab some like yellow and light, light green. Kind of fill in some of those white spaces down here so it's like grass in between the flowers. Just gonna, I did some up here just yellow, but I like the bright yellow green. So we're just gonna fill in some of those areas that are kind of white. Because don't forget, we're gonna lift up that masking fluid too, and that's gonna reveal some white. So I'm just got this bright, chartreuse kind of green coming in here. Just like that. All in between some of the pretty flower colors that we have. Just kind of tap that in. Maybe put some more green down in here. If you want to get rid of some of that pink. Okay, so now we're going to put some trees in. Just my tape's kind of lifted up a little bit. Push that back down. Um, we're going to just do far, start by doing like like a bluish light green in the background. So I've got the the olive green. I'm going to grab some indigo. Make it look a dark green, but I'm going to water it down a little bit. So it's like a medium to dark green. Water it down. I dab it on the paper towel. I'm going to just put, put some trees. So you just push the paint like this. Some little light trees back here this color tone. Maybe grab a little more blue. And a little gray. Because it wanted to be like this faded tree in the background. That's a little too dark. You're going to have to kind of play around with so it looks almost like a grayish green tree. Want kind of a like gray green. There we go. It should dry a little bit lighter. And put another one back here. Just like that. And then some back here. Really loose kind of tree. You know, branches and a trunk. Just like this. Don't have to go too crazy. Just put a few in there. All right, just got a few of those like really light, loose kind of looking. You can just make some marks like the trees. You don't even have to actually put trees in. Just really loose, abstract kind of marks. And then we're going to grab some tree colors. We're going to get the brown here, Van Dyke brown. I'm going to grab some paints gray with that. A little more of the gray too, like a brownish gray, maybe a little indigo. Yeah, and then we're going to put in some trees. So this one can go right on top of the other one. It's like a leaning dark tree. All right. Another one back here. Put a nice big one here. Get some of this concentrated color. Right in where the flowers are. This is like the bottom because these are bigger trees in the foreground. Just like that. And I might put another one here. Fix this one here, back here. You can put as many trees as you want. Like three is good. Three to five. Again, you can put like another lighter one back here. Smaller. And then maybe I'll put another small one back here. We're just doing the trunks because these are taller, right? And those other ones you saw with the little branches way, way in the background. And this is where you can tweak it. Okay, we can go back in with our greens. 
And we can just kind of take tap some greens around where the trees are, maybe add some grays and browns in here where the shadows of the trees would be from the flowers. It's also good to step back. I'm going to stand up to see how I like it or not. Kind of getting there. And then I'll add, like I said, some of these shadows. I'm going to get this a little bit darker going down here. Just taking some greens. I'm just tapping, da, 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 da. you see me just tapping the color like that. Nothing crazy. So when you put the trees in, you kind of see where you need to put the shadows in of the greens. And grab some of those grays. Just kind of putting the shadows back here. Kind of like coming this way on a diagonal. And just taking the number eight, this is the Prince number eight brush. Whatever brush you want to use is fine. Getting even a little darker, I'm going to grab some more indigo. Just getting right up to that tree. It's good to step back. Yeah, see? So it's like, you see that light background? The sun's coming in through the forest. And we're getting some dark color right down in here. So showing some of those bright flowers that we have. It's like a fun little game. A game. Fun little <laughs> game. Whoa. Losing it. Um, yeah. Like in the woods. I always feel like I want to put something right in the middle here. I'm tempted. I might want to put one of those really loose light trees in the gray. Yeah. So like I needed like a slight one in there. There we go. And then we can go again with the dark colors right from the tree going downward. Blues. Has that kind of quality to it. So now there's a lot of pink in the front. There isn't much pink in the back. You can take your bright rose, just kind of add some pink back here so it doesn't feel like it's all alone in the front. It's going to be fun to reveal the uh, masking fluid, right? Those would be like kind of daisies we can stick in, little yellow spots. In the, I'm adding a little more bright rose, you can see, kind of throughout. But it has this like really organic quality to it right now. At this point, you can go in and just grab some peacock blue or whatever, and you can kind of add some blue to this green over here. Even more yellow. Just kind of brighten it up a little bit. If it seems like it dulled down too much. You don't have to do that. Again, grab some of this yellow right right from the tube. Put it right on there. Let's see. I always like to stand up to see how I'm doing with my stuff. Yep, I want a little bit darker in here. So I'm grabbing a little more dark color. As you can see, I'm going in here. Okay. At this point, I'm just going to dry it. And we're going to see what we got, right? When we reveal the uh, masking fluid. Okay guys, moment of truth, and you know I like to do real-time videos, and this is my real-time video. I have a rubber cement pickup. This is also like $4 on Amazon. I have a, a link to this in the description box. Let's see what we got. Let's see how much fun this is. What did we create with our splatterness <laughs> on the trees? You just never know where it went, right? This is fun. I think that was it. Oh, that was a few more. Wow. Completely changed it, right? Now, if you didn't like that because it got too white in those areas, you just go right back over it with the with, uh, paint. You know, that's the whole fun of it. You just don't know where it went. Kind of wild, right? 
So I might want to, I'm standing up, so I like to see standing up how I want to get rid of some of them. I don't want to get rid of all of them. I do want to get rid of some of them that are in here in my line of sight of the tree dark colors. But I like where the rest of them are kind of floating. Some back here make no sense. Oops, sorry guys. Um, so I want to get rid of those. You know, where it makes no sense because it would be dark. I'm going to kind of get rid of those. The rest of it's kind of fun, right? So then oh, this one's a little ridiculous, a little too big. I'm going to tweak that. Some greens. But you know, it's a funny surprise wherever it went, right? This kind of looks all like one monotone in here. I might have to go in and grab some yellow and tab that in there so it's not so flat. But that's so much fun. And then we can just go in and grab um, some yellow. This my brush is filthy. Grab some nice yellow. This has got too much green on it. I'm going to get rid of it. And we can go in the middle of these little guys, like little daisies. I mean, you know, it could take you forever to put a little middle in there. But you kind of get the gist of it. And like I said, play around with the whole entire thing. Go back in again with some dark greens. Grabbing some dark green here. And go back in here and put little grasses in here again. If you want to highlight those a little more in the front. They kind of got washed away. Just kind of add them in. See, I'm just taking in, going just a little plate, not everywhere. Go back in and adding some nice greens coming up through some of the areas over here. That would just make more sense. But we're having fun here, we're just splattering in color, using the mask of fluid. We had everything in the kitchen sink today, I think, right? Wet on wet, <laughs> wet on dry. But that was such a cool, fun effect. Now, the real fun to me always is lifting up the tape. Oh yeah. See what kind of masterpieces you guys can come up with. Look how much fun. Come on, that was not hard. Right? If you can paint like just a brush, go like that for a tree and little branches. You could splatter paint. You can put in some masking fluid. And you can create this really fun, you know, foresty meadow kind of look. Abstract. I hope you guys like this tutorial. I thought it was really kind of fun and just... I'm I'm learn I'm I am like doing it the same time as you like basically it was all real time so it was nothing like planned and that's how I kind of like to paint sometimes you know some people are like oh I planned out kind of like the idea of it and then the execution you never know what you get right I mean it's kind of funny that my tree was going this way and this way but <laughs> it's okay maybe it should have all gone that way make more sense but hey, it's fun who cares. All right, guys, thank you guys so much for coming to my channel. If you haven't checked out my Patreon, do so. The link is in the description box, my about page. Um, you know, that's why I have ad-free videos, traceables, and exclusive tutorials there weekly. So enjoy, have fun with it. Don't get stressed out. This is supposed to be fun. Take care, guys, and I'll speak to you soon.